on the outskirts of Yucca Valley, which is right by Joshua Tree National Park, is this amazing park. It's called Desert Christ Park. It's a tribute to the life and times of Jesus. And this park is just a bunch of life-size statues set up in scenes that are taken from the Bible. So we're gonna take you around and uh, show you some of the park statues and also meet someone who runs the place, who works here and knows all about the history. And then this one. I will be reading passages from the Bible as we're going from different uh, statues to statue, talking about the different events in Christ's life. So it's, it's gonna be very interesting and very inspirational and also very in, enlightening. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you, don't, you don't have to be a Christian religion to appreciate this park. I think no matter what religion, if any, that you subscribe to, just it's such a, um, a beautiful tribute to the beliefs of the Christian religion and to Jesus himself. And it's just, you know, I think it's something that anybody would enjoy. It's definitely something worth seeing if you happen to be in, Absolutely. in Yucca Valley. So let's go. Let's go. All righty then. So this is the rock chapel, yes? Yes, so this is the rock chapel that is on the Evangelical Free Church property. And we each have a key and are happy to open it. If you want to visit, you want to have something inside, you can talk to the church or to me and I'll help facilitate the use. Yeah, it's a perfect location for a small wedding. Currently, we focus our restoration funds at the park that we maintain the proper area of. Okay. Um, but in the future, if funds become available to spread out to this part of the park, we we're on our way. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. So it's on the it's on the list, right? It's, it's definitely on the list of <laughs> things to do, but that list is pretty long currently and it'll happen. And Roxanne, what do you do here at Desert Christ? I am the president of the Desert Christ Park Foundation and we are the caretakers of Desert Christ Park. The park came into being with an idea by Pastor Eddie Garver who owned this five acres back in the early, the late 50s, or late 40s, early 50s. Okay. And he wanted to have a theme park with Bible stories and he wanted to have Easter sunrise services here. So he did that in 1950 on this property, and then someone mentioned to him that there was a sculpture of Christ in a driveway in Inglewood, California, <laughs> and that sculpture was made by Anton Martin. Wait, you're saying the sculpture was in somebody's driveway? Anton Martin's driveway, who was the sculptor, who, who lived in Inglewood. And Eddie Garver got wind of it and went to Inglewood and said, I have the perfect spot, come visit. Uh, you know, he just encouraged Anton Martin to come to Yucca Valley, so he did. Mm -hmm. They talked about where to put the, what we call the Ascension Christ, which is right. the first sculpture that was on the property. And they trucked it to Yucca Valley and had it ready for Easter Sunday, 1951. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> and now, I have to blow my nose. Cut. Uh. <laughs> After that, Anton Martin came and lived on the property and brought and, and created all the sculptures you see today. So it was one sculptor who did one all sculptor. of the... Oh, right, okay. and so this rock chapel is a little unique because it was the artwork of Frank Garski. He lived in the area, he was a stonemason, he had a lot of other talents, and he came on board to help create this rock chapel with the help of Eddie Garver, Anton Martin, uh, and there were a number of other people um, who worked on and off throughout the process because okay. each stone was brought in, all the concrete was mixed by hand, you know, so it was a labor of love of all those people. 
That is awesome. And so when was when was the Rock Chapel completed? Do you know? Do you have any idea? About 1956. Do, do people do you get a lot of tourists here, or is it mostly locals? We get a lot of tourists. Oh. I would say it's mostly tourists okay. anymore. Do you happen to have any like um, holiday events or anything happen here? We do. We have. We're we're now focusing on Easter week. So the, okay. the week between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we have a lot of events that we advertise going on. Okay. We also continue to hold National Day of Prayer, which is the first Thursday in May okay. in the park. So when they were creating this, the plans or the how to position the chapel, Christ, the Ascension Christ was already on the hillside. So if you look through the cross, you see the Ascension Christ. Oh, I Yo, see there it. There is. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. Another shot we'll do outside is through the keyhole in the top of the chapel, you can also see Christ. Oh, you can my. just center him in it. And it is a perfect photograph location and has been done for his, into history. They, it's always the shot that everybody gets of that's, the chapel. That's the shot. That's the shot. That's, <laughs> that's so pretty awesome. cool. This is the amphitheater at Desert Christ Park, which is built by the Evangelical Free Church of Yucca Valley to hold Easter sunrise services. And if you come to a sunrise service in, at Easter, you'll be sitting, sitting here right at sunrise where you will see the tomb of Christ lit up by the sun first and the ascension Christ then in full sunlight as well. And it's quite moving to sit here for Easter Sunday. So this is the kiosk and we ask people to start here so that they get the opportunity to have a brochure, a guidebook to tell you the Bible verses of each grouping of sculptures. Okay. We try to keep our newsletter, which we publish twice a year out in here. We also have a child kid type thing where you can locate all the Jesus faces in the park. There's 10. And we have historical photos and a little history about Anton Martin and how the park became. This is important. This is where we get donations and we, we uh, designate where those donations go. If people give us specifics, we are happy to account for those funds in different areas of the park. If they want to donate funds for restoration, we will keep those separate and only use those funds for restoration. If they want funds to go to restoration of the Rock Chapel, we're happy to designate those funds for that. And if they want it just to go to general expenses, we're happy to use it there too, which is an ongoing need. What is your first restoration project that you're working on right now? The first one that Kate did was the Blessing of the Children that that was the one with the most damage and it really it took her a couple years to really complete there are 12 sculptures in that and Jesus's arm got broken a year after restoration was completed so she had to redo it but it was all done and it's completed now so we have about 17 completed the Garden of Gethsemane has three sculptures of the sleeping disciples that need um, primer and paint and we're hoping to do that before Christmas. Jesus up on the hillside praying will take some scaffolding and some reinforcement of the area before she can get up there and do any work. So there is really no end to restoration. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process and probably right about the time we're done we're gonna have to repaint everything. Exactly. <laughs> is that always the way? But we're looking forward to that moment. <laughs> So in an effort to, well, you to fund yeah. restoration, there you go. we put a, came up with a campaign to have people have their names of support here. And so Kate, then we take in an application, they donate $100 and we put what they want on their stone and place it in the park on the pathway and it, it helps retain the area and the water and the gives it a little stability to the planters so it's yeah 
that's fun. It's an ongoing project. We're probably going to just keep it going on. Why not? Because it works. Yeah, it's awesome. So this is one of the final areas I wanted to show you. We had a bench donated by one of our volunteers and we decided to have Anton Martin Desert Christ Park sculpture from 1951 to 1961 added to it so that people know when the park was actually created and who did it. Wow, this is beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Oh, it's been wonderful. Thank you, thank you so for much. Coming. I'm excited to to see have the... somebody else promote the park. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's, it definitely deserves it. It's a beautiful, beautiful park and you guys are doing a marvelous, incredible job. So, thank, thank you for taking the time to show us everything. We're going to go check out the park and read some of the scriptures that were Great. designated for each scene. Wonderful. Well, thanks for being okay. here. I will be reading passages from this Bible that was given to me after my father passed away. It was his. And he died of a heart attack at the age of 45, which is very young. And I miss him dearly. And if I knew then what I know now, you know, living the healthy, healthy lifestyle that I live and being vegan, plant-based nutrition, I'm pretty sure my dad would be alive today. That was a hard time in my life. I miss him very much. So, this, this, this is for you, Dad. I love you, and I miss you. Number one, blessing of the children. I am reading Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Number two, Sermon on the Mount. I am reading Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 13. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but as the salt have lost his savory, wherewith shall it be salted? It is there hence good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. This is scene three, Samaritan Woman at the Well. I will be reading from the book of John, chapter four, verses 11 through 14. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I will be reading from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet, and heard his word. 
But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Number 5, Garden of Gethsemane. I will be reading from Mark chapter 14, verse 32 through 35. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter, and James, and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch. And he went forth a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Number 6, The Last Supper. I will be reading from Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through 21. Now on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, my time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Okay. This is scene seven, it's called Let the Children Come to Me, and we have chosen to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses one through five. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. This is number eight, Christ's blessing all mankind. I'm reading Matthew the 28th chapter, the 18th to the 20th verse. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Number nine, the tomb of Christ. I'll be reading from Mark chapter 16, verse one through seven. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Salome, had bought sweet spices, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering to the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you unto Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. We are at the very last one, number 10, the resurrection of Christ. I will be reading from Luke 24, verse 50 through 53. 
And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Thank you.